and welcome to the Meeting Your Soul Chakra Meditation. This meditation is all about our third eye or the seat of our highest self. It's located in between our eyebrows and really kind of on the exterior of our penile gland, which is connected to our prefrontal cortex of our brain, the place of higher cognitive function. Hmm? Surprise, I'm not. <laughs> and often when we feel balanced within our um, sixth chakra, we feel relaxed, we feel at ease and connected to our intuition. We're able to problem solve and activate from this place of an inner knowing, of our inner wisdom, our Atman within the yogic philosophy. It's our place to be able to kind of see into the future, to be able to engage with our sixth sense or even our psychic abilities. This often is correlated with being clairvoyant, seeing through that third eye, that space where we're seeing into the spiritual realm. And I say all of that, but in this very physical sense, if we're feeling we had a headache or we get migraines, it can also be manifesting from a blocked six chakra. So there's a few different things that you can do in order to activate the center and to bring it back into balance. It is correlated with the color navy or indigo. So wearing those colors can be a way to kind of bring you back into balance. It's always been what, probably my most um, open and fluid chakra for me. I have always had a very deep a connection with my intuition. And I think it's because that's always been an easier face for me to connect while some of my lower chakras have been things that have been harder for me to um, clear out and to be able to stay balanced. So or so we can wear in color indigo. I've always loved wearing indigo. So that's why I think it's funny. I didn't wreck. I didn't know that that's why I loved wearing it until I got older, but it's always been something that's been a very staple within my wardrobe. And then we also can just simply, um, applying pressure. So bringing your hand to your third eye, kind of rubbing along here. You can even use your two pointer fingers, go along your brow line to your temples. I'm coming back through. So kind of massaging this area within your face is an excellent way here to kind of loosen up any sudden energy that might be present within your third eye. The um, practice of child's pose. Um, so if you're familiar with yoga, having your coming down to the ground, bringing your knees wide or close together, extending your arms up overhead and connecting your third eye into your mat it can be a soothing exercise, can help kind of declutter. When we start to feel anxious or overwhelmed or our minds kind of racing from one thing to the next, it can be kind of almost too much energy that's like flustering around are fluttering within our third eye. So that grounding effect, even placing your third eye onto the earth, kind of clearing out some of that clutter can be an excellent opportunity for you to be able to kind of self-soothe, to be able to simmer. And also this idea of just simply clearing out your mind. Meditation is an excellent way to help balance your sixth chakra. Um, so it's a, a way for you to be able to create the gaps, the spaces in between your thoughts, allowing our intuition to be heard more loudly and clearly. And this is also an opportunity for us to be able to get those pieces of divine insight from our intuition to be able to um, be able to slow our mind down, to be able to slow that judgment, that reactionary part of us in order to allow the truth to bubble up to the surface. And our intuition is never going to be screaming. It's, well, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, depending on how many times your lessons come through. But more often than not, it's very subtle. It's very kind of like, it's almost like a whisper. And so we have to be able to tone down the volume of our other thoughts, of our ego, of the programming that we've been fed pretty much our entire lives in order to allow our truth to come up to the surface in order for that to be heard or seen. And so meditation is an excellent opportunity for us to be able to um, kind of like let go, to be able to clear out space in order for our intuition to ring through and for us to be able to hear those divine pieces of um, knowledge and um, guidance truly. Right. And so a few activities that you can do to help cultivate this outside of meditation, wearing Navy or even, um, 
doing child's pose or any kind of forward fold to where you're cutting off the distractions from the outside world and going within. Um, and if you listen to sophageo frequencies, it can be returning to oneness, returning to that. You can do that as kind of like almost um, kind of recalibrating the atoms within you by aligning with those reverberations that can allow us to kind of tap into that highest self. Um, and you can also even like visualize, um, taking in a moment, taking a few breaths and kind of like even imagine yourself in that highest self seat. Like, what do I look like? How do I feel? Where am I? Who's around me? All of those things can play a part in you kind of imagining the life that you desire, that you feel like is truly your calling. And so often our um, sixth chakra is also in alignment with living our purpose, living our truth you know, living our highest self. It all comes back around. They're all correlated. They're all connected. And the more aligned we are with that, the more that we can show up fully and authentically in everything that we do. So the meditation that I'm going to guide us through is actually staring at a candle. So often the, um, six chakra or our third eye is correlated with just the idea of light. So kind of letting light pour over you, which we'll do within the meditation. So don't you worry, but I thought we would go ahead and light a candle really to signify that in the physical sense as well. Since the six chakra in particular can be a little esoteric, can be a little bit out there for some people. Let's root it down. Let's make it a little bit more tangible. Okay. So go ahead and light your candle or go get a candle, pause, go grab a candle, come back, <laughs> or even just a, uh, a, um, a flame, any kind of flame that you want to light. Uh, be careful. Obviously don't burn yourself. Be, you know, mindful of that, but, um, and then find a comfortable seat. And I'm actually going to encourage you to find more of a meditative seat here, just to kind of tap into that a little bit more intuitive side of ourselves from the jump. If you want to grab a pillow or a meditation seat or even a block, you can throw it underneath your sits bones here as well, just to find a little bit more of a com comfortable position. So bring yourself right in front of your candle, gazing down at it. Make sure that you can see it clearly. Yeah, and then let's close our eyes here just to ground to roots, to feel into our breath and the fluctuations of our chest. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out of your mouth. And I'm going to encourage you to actually bring your palms to touch Anjali Mudra. Press your thumbs into your third eye and to feel that pressure there. Heightening the awareness of that energetic center. And subtly just allowing the breath to flow. Noticing the cadence, the depth. Lengthening each round. Easing into it as you move through the breath. Believing in your highest self, knowing that it's available to you, that it's always watching over you. I also like to connect this particular chakra with that soul engagement with our essence that's always been here, that's always been present. Apply a little bit more pressure to our penile gland. And I bring your thumbs down to your heart, connecting our highest self with our, oh, our space within our chest, our anahata. 
our heart chakra, aligning the two. Now place your hands down onto your thighs or a comfortable position wherever they so land. And then return your gaze to the flame. Notice the natural shape of it. It's probably a little bit brighter now that your eyes have been closed. Notice any flicker or movement as you stare down, as it dances within the candle. And the container that holds it. Notice how, is it, how it naturally starts to shift, maybe even as you're speaking or looking at it, if it moves around, if it grows brighter. Imagine if you could physically try to make the flame even larger. occurs how can you lean into the seat of the observer removing the judgment which it should be allowing it to be exactly what it is notice if you're holding on to your breath Loosen that grip. few more moments here. Close your eyes, imagine that flame within your mind's eye. And let's go ahead and imagine that highest self, you being in your fullest expression. Being very clear, letting that direction or that vision naturally just evolve in front of you. Now let's not try to get too lost into the details of the physical experience and the appearance of what you might look like. How do you feel? What is your essence? What are you radiating within you? You know, people don't remember necessarily what you said or how you looked, but they always remember that feeling they had after they left you. So how do you want you to feel when you're looking at yourself? Proud, confident, loving, compassionate, peaceful, and their truth. Listing off a few things for you. Now, who are you surrounding yourself with? What career do you have? What do you do on a daily basis? Day in and day out. How are you living in alignment with your highest self? I 
And what are you shining in order to make space for those things? How can you mold your life, the design that was already meant for you, that's already available to you, that would put you in the projection of living your dharma, your life purpose? What does your house look like? Where do you live? What kind of car do you drive? Or maybe you don't want to drive. Maybe you have a bike or you walk around. You're in an area that's very walkable. yourself imagine for this to already be true it is not in the future it is already yours those visualization kind of slowly come to an end recognizing the truth what you've already activated by aligning aligning yourself with that future that you desire imagining it to already be yours because it is thank you so much for joining me for this meditation always a pleasure Let me know if you have any questions and hopefully you've explored my other meditations. If you haven't, feel free to take a look on my website, Coaching with Vera, where all the meditations are available as a pack or you can buy them individually. Namaste.